added a white Gaussian channel. So here, the channel inputs x are assumed to be in the alphabet plus 1, minus 1, instead of 0, 1. And the outputs y are continuous. They're in the real numbers, where we have y is equal to x plus n. This is now real addition, not mod 2 addition, because n is continuous. And n is a Gaussian random variable distributed with zero mean. This is this notation means a Gaussian random a distributed Gaussian zero mean and variance sigma squared. Um, when we were talking about channel capacity, I chose to skip over the discussion of the capacity of the, the Gaussian channel, and I told you to go read it in the book. Um, just for lack of time, because I wanted to cover this material. But the other way Gaussian noise channel is everywhere in communications. It's, it's uh, extremely common, and it's common specifically because um, if you take a very weak signal, as most signals are, you amplify it, and then you look at the, the amplified output. So for instance, if you send a square wave like this, it arrives at the other end as an extremely weak square wave, and then you amplify it back to where it was. It doesn't look like that anymore. Instead, it will look like this. And it turns out this noise is well modeled by the Gaussian distribution, because uh, the Gaussian distribution um, is a good model for the random motions of electrons and uh, the, the thermal motion of electrons in electrical wires which are present in the amplifier. And incidentally, the Gaussian model is good for uh, that and many other purposes thanks to what's called the central limit theorem, which says that if you have a system of enough random things interacting together, the sum of um, all of those uh, interactions will be approximately distributed by the Gaussian. Which is why, for example, if you take a large class and plot their uh, plot their scores on a histogram, it looks roughly like the bell curve. Anyway, um, the Gaussian PDF, f of y given x, so if I know what x is, then knowing x, then x is deterministic, x has no additional variance, but it will offset the noise by either plus one or minus one, then y is distributed Gaussian with mean x and variance sigma squared, which means f of y given x is given by this, one over root two pi sigma squared x, where x basically means e to the power of minus one over two sigma squared times y minus x. So again, if we take the log likelihood ratio of this, excuse me, instead of 0 and 1, we now have in the numerator plus 1 and in the denominator minus 1 is the convention. Uh, plus one generally maps to zero, and minus uh, one generally maps to minus one. This is log in the numerator one over root two pi sigma squared x minus one over two sigma squared y minus plus one. So that's y minus one squared divided by one over root two pi sigma squared, x negative one over two sigma squared, y minus minus one, which is plus
plus one. So if we cancel this and this, This is, log, uh, excuse me, let me look at this first, x over x. What I can do is I can say that log x of the numerator, 1 over 2 sigma squared, y minus 1 squared, minus the denominator. So it's minus minus, which is plus 1 over 2 sigma squared, y plus 1 squared. And I'm taking log of e to the power of this. So therefore, e to the power of uh, log e to the power cancels out, and I get negative 1 over 2 sigma squared, y minus 1 squared, plus 1 over 2 sigma squared, y plus 1 squared. Next. If you have a Gaussian channel and you know the variance, the log likelihood ratio is just 2y, whatever you observe, 2 times y divided by the variance. All right, any questions on that? Let's take a look at an example, a decoding example. 